How do I find a model and how do I get the machine to print it? Between Thingiverse.com and Printables.com, there are millions of free downloadable models for anything you can think of. If you want to design your own parts, you'll need a CAD software that can save models as a .stl file. Autodesk Fusion 360 is one of our favorites, but most 3D CAD programs can do this. I need some storage bins, so I'll search that on Thingiverse. I have quite a few results, and I like the look of this one. On the part page, click Thing Files, and it will open the available files. Then you can download individual files or all files. Open up Cura and press File, Open Files. Find the model you just downloaded and press Open. You can also simply drag and drop the file into the build space. The model can be dragged and placed anywhere in the build space. The left hand bar also lets you move it to exact coordinates, has additional options for scaling, rotating, mirroring, model settings, and support blocking. Holding right click and dragging the mouse rotates the view, holding middle click and dragging pans the view. Hitting slice in the bottom right of the screen slices the part and shows the estimated time and material use in grams and meters. It also changes the view to show the layers and the slider on the right hand side of the screen will let you browse through the layers and see how the part will be built. The different colors highlight the different parts of the print, brims, walls, skin layers, infill, start points. The bottom slider lets you look through how the layer will be built. Now that you have an idea of what you're looking at, I'll go into detail about the slicing parameters. Click the right side of the bar at the top of the build space view. The recommended view has very basic options for slicing parameters. I like to go in the custom view and keep it on the basic preset for beginners. The height of each layer sliced is defined in quality. 0.1 millimeters is the thinnest recommended with the stock nozzle and 0.2 millimeters is the thickest. Thin layers provide more detail and give a smoother look, but will take longer to print. Looking at the angle on this print, it will be most evident when I change this to 0.1 millimeters. It looks smoother, but my print time has shot up by almost three hours. I'll stick with 0.2 millimeters on this one for speed. Next setting down, walls, is used to define the wall thickness or line count. A single wall is the width of the installed nozzle, which is 0.4 millimeters. Two walls is good for most prints. On parts where I want some extra strength and puncture or wear resistance, I'll pump that up to four. This part will be fine with two, and the sides are so thin, I'll only be able to fit two or three walls anyway. Top slash bottom, is used to alter the thickness or layer count of the solid portions at the top and bottom of the print. Personally, I don't change this from four layers typically. Infill is huge. This is what fills between the walls and top slash bottom print layers. Think of it as the percentage of your part that is solid. For parts that don't need to be strong, 10 to 20% is ample. Where strength is needed, 30 to 50% helps greatly. Very high percentage infills are almost always unnecessary unless you need a completely solid part or are trying to add weight intentionally. Infill pattern has a small effect on speed. Grid is one of the fastest and triangles is one of the strongest. This part has a very small amount of infill, so I won't change this. Material is critical as well. Make sure you have the printing temperature and build plate temperature defined where they need to be for your material. PLA likes 200 degrees Celsius. PLA plus likes 210 to 215 degrees Celsius and both are great with 50 to 60 Celsius on the build plate. I'm printing PLA plus, so I'll set the nozzle to the upper end of that range. Speed, I'll usually leave at 60 millimeters a second, but it can be increased at the cost of quality in some cases. I'll turn this up to 70 millimeters a second to get this part done quicker. In travel, keep retraction enabled to minimize the stringiness or cobwebs on the print. Z-hop when retracted can also help with that too. On PLAs, you almost always want the part cooling fan enabled and set to 100%. It simply results in a higher quality print with more capability to bridge and overhang. Support can be enabled if your part has large areas with no support below. If I flip this bin upside down, there will be a large distance that must be bridged. The printer can bridge quite well, but with this large a distance, it usually needs some help. Support will make a thin structure to provide a rest for the layer. It's very thin and can be broken off after the print is completed. With the part flipped, I can demo the supports as we see here. Build plate adhesion offers a few options to get better first layer adhesion. Skirt makes a small ring around the part to prep the nozzle. Brim makes a boundary connecting to the part to make the edges and corners stick better. 
and Raft will build a platform for the part to be built on top of and then separated from later. I usually stick with a basic skirt. Ignore dual extrusion as this printer only has a single extruder. Now that I have the settings I want for this print, I hit slice and the computer will generate the sliced machine path. This can take a minute for large parts, but this one is simple. With the micro SD card plugged in, I can save it directly or save it to another location on the computer. Here at the printer, I'll insert the micro SD card and find the print file. Now it will start printing as usual. We'll closely monitor the first layer. With a good first layer, I'll come back after this one is completed. Look at that, came out great. Now I have a bin I can organize some fasteners with.